Hey folks, so what you're about to watch is a complete video guide on how to raise a happy, healthy, and social pet. And it's actually the first year of life of my Springer Spaniel, Valerie. It was a video series that I put out with my friend Sam Montany. It was released in 2015, and we used to charge 100 bucks for it. We've recently decided to make it free to everybody. If you're interested in some more advanced concepts in training, there'll be a link to my online course in the description below. But if you find value in this, please like the video, consider subscribing, and share it around to all your friends. In this video, we will show you how to select a puppy from the litter, travel safely with the puppy, and introduce it to your home. It's important when selecting a puppy that it displays the attributes that will best suit you, your family, and your living situation. The cutest looking puppy, or the one with the colors you want, may not be the best fit for you. The breeder should be able to assist you in picking a puppy that meets your requirements. Here we see Sam testing your litter. We've decided we want a puppy with lots of energy and drive, with a quick recovery. He's looking for a puppy that is keen to engage with him, wants to bring back toys to play, and is overall very happy. At eight weeks old, the puppy should not be scared of simple noises like clapping hands and shouldn't be overly concerned about being picked up and put down. We want to avoid dogs displaying any shy and or timid behaviour. It is simplest and safest to carry your dog out to the car and place it in the crate or other restraining system. Most areas will have some sort of specific law about dogs being either contained or tethered in the car. This is Val's very first time being in a crate. So as you'll see, she cried and whined almost the whole way home. This is normal and nothing to worry about. When we arrived at my house, we arranged to have Val and my other dog Ryder meet in the garage as sort of a neutral ground. Ryder has been exposed to lots of puppies in and out of my house and this is no big deal to him. If you have another dog, how you introduce them will vary on your dog and its history. If you're unsure, this is an area you should consult your local trainer for further assistance. Up into the house. Come on. Yeah. Stairs can sometimes be a challenge for puppies. It's important that you don't get too involved. Just take your time and let the puppy figure it out. Come on. Good girl. Yeah. Yeah. 
As we enter the house, we just let the puppy explore around and get to know her new environment, all while supervised. Val is wearing a collar for the very first time, and until she gets used to it, she will scratch at it from time to time. Val was a very confident puppy right from the beginning. That's one of the reasons we chose her. It's normal for your puppy to seem a little concerned and insecure being away from its little mates for the very first time. In our socialization video, we will teach you how to deal with that situation. Market training is the base on which we'll develop a communication system with our puppy. It is based on proven scientific theory of classical conditioning. In this video, we will show you how to establish a positive and negative marker, a way of telling your puppy, yes, you are doing the right thing, and no, you are doing the wrong thing. Step one is to give value to a word that the puppy will come to understand means what you are doing at this exact moment is correct, and I'm happy you're doing it. We use the word yes, but you can use any word you like. However, it must be a word you can continually say with the exact same tone and inflection. Consistency is the key. Some trainers use a clicker, which is fantastic, as the sound it makes is always consistent. The problem we have with clickers is that they can be difficult to use when your hands are full with leashes or treats. You can also find yourself wanting to mark a behavior with your dog, but not have your clicker handy, where, as you always will have your voice. Here we're not looking for any specific behavior other than eye contact from our puppy. Every time she looks at us, we give our positive marker, being the yes, and then give her a food reward. We have a three to five second window to deliver the food reward after we give the positive marker. Yes. 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 Step two is to give value to a word that the puppy will come to understand means I do not want you to continue with the behaviour you are displaying. We use the word no, but you can use any word you like. Again, consistency is the key. It must be a word you can say the same way consistently. No. 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 We have set up a scenario where Val is attempting to get a very high value piece of food. By blocking her from getting to the food and giving the no command, we will create an association with the no, which she will come to understand means that she is doing something undesirable and we are not allowing her to be successful. As soon as Val shows the behavior we want, which is not going towards the food, we then mark her with a positive marker, being the yes, yes. and deliver a food reward, which then reinforces the no. Be patient, as this can take several minutes or longer, depending no. on your individual dog. No. No. Good. 
girl. Good girl. Luring is an important part of the dog's development as it allows us to manipulate the puppy into a position so that we can mark and reward the puppy for being in that position. When selecting a reward treat for your puppy, it is important that its value not be too low or too high. It must be interesting enough that you can hold your dog's attention, but not so high value that the dog cannot control itself for want to get at the food. The type of food you use will be relevant to the distraction level you are training under. This is the way we choose to hold the food when luring the puppy. By covering the food with our farm, we can keep it stable and control when the puppy is able to take it from us. While covering the food, we allow the puppy to push in our hand, attempting to get the food. In this way, we can control the direction of our puppy's head. And when we control the head, we control the whole body. When we have lured the puppy to the desired location or position, we mark with a yes and then allow the puppy to take the food. The same can be accomplished by luring the puppy with its toys, however this will depend on the interest level of individual dogs. Using a combination of these tools we will be able to effectively communicate with our puppy, forming the blueprint on which all our training will develop. We choose skinless hot dogs as a reward. This allows us to cut into an appropriate size without it crumbling in our hands and allows us to deliver it effectively to the puppy. Crate training is the process of teaching a puppy to accept a crate or cage as a familiar and safe environment. Our intention is to create a positive, safe location where the puppy is happy to spend time. This will also be the basis of how we toilet train our puppy. A puppy should not want to empty out in a crate and keeping it in its crate will allow us to some extent control its toilet habits. The first step is creating a positive association with the crate. Here we are luring Val into the crate and marking as soon as she enters. Not all puppies immediately take to the crate. Some take a bit more persistence than others. At the start, we reward for any forward momentum into the crate. We continue to do this until the puppy is all the way in the crate so that we can shut the door. We let them out almost immediately and slowly increase the duration of time the puppy is in the crate. We can lure with any reward item or toy. By placing the puppy's favourite toy in the crate and closing the door, we will increase the puppy's motivation to get into the crate. By having toys and food pre-positioned in the crate, it provides your puppy the ability to independently reward itself for going into the crate. Your puppy is going to cry in the crate. This is totally normal. The key to success is to only let the puppy out once it is quiet and calm. Whilst it's crying in the crate, the puppy must be ignored. Any attention, good or bad, will be seen as success by the puppy and will increase the duration it will cry for. A puppy is going to need to toilet very regularly, and so we don't leave them in the crate for any extended period of time. 
When we do let the calm puppy out of the crate, we take them immediately to the place we want them to use as a toilet. If that's all the way at the other end of your house, it may be necessary to carry the puppy to the desired spot to avoid any accidents. Be aware that if you have fed your puppy and placed it in the crate, it will need to be taken out to toilet around 10 to 15 minutes later. Hey, good kid. Your puppy may not toilet immediately, and it could take several minutes of waiting. Don't get frustrated, but try and keep the puppy in the location you want it to toilet. Through consistency and repetition, the puppy will learn where it is appropriate to toilet. When the puppy toilets where we want them to, we mark and reward that behaviour. Yes, good girl, good toilet. Yeah, good. Leaving an eight week old puppy unsupervised in the home is a recipe for disaster. The crate provides a secure area where the dog is left alone and can't get into any trouble. This can be beneficial when you have guests that perhaps are not comfortable around dogs or a dog that isn't comfortable around your guests. To achieve this, we always minimize our interaction with the puppy while it is in the crate. Our intention is to have the puppy think of the crate as its own bedroom or safe place. If at any stage your puppy toilets inside the house, we should consider that our fault. The puppy should be supervised or be in the crate. Look for telltale signs that your puppy may need to toilet, like spinning or excessive sniffing in a particular area. In this video, we will show you the techniques for feeding your puppy. We will not cover exactly what to feed your puppy or how much to feed it. That information is best derived first from your breeder and then, as the puppy grows, from your vet. We will demonstrate a technique to ensure your puppy does not become possessive of or guard their food, as well as eliminate any unruly behaviours your puppy can develop due to overexcitement at feeding time. With the puppy's food in its bowl, we wait for the puppy to sit at our feet and give us eye contact. When the puppy displays that calm behaviour, we mark and reward with the food. When the puppy is finished eating or loses interest in the bowl, we pick it up and remove it. Removing what is left of the food will eliminate creating picky eaters. At some point, it may become necessary to feed your puppy in the crate. No matter where you feed your puppy, all the same rules apply. It's also important to have fresh clean water available for your puppy at all times. Some dogs can become very excited and unruly during feed time. It's important to remember that you're about to deliver the puppy's biggest reward for the day, and so the behavior they are showing just prior to receiving this reward will be massively reinforced. Watch now as we stop prepping Val's food, deliver the no command, and wait for her to show a calm demeanor prior to continuing. No. No. Yes. 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 
At no stage should you ever interfere with your dogs while they're eating. This can create resource guarding and other unwanted behaviours. Allow the dog to eat, when it's finished or loses interest, then you can remove the bowl. This way the puppy will never see us or anyone else as competition for its food. Socialisation is crucial to your puppy's development. Before you take your puppy out and about in public, you must first consult your vet on what vaccinations are required prior to your dog going outside the home. This will ensure that your dog is protected from potentially harmful diseases. It's critical that your puppy has a large number of positive experiences in as many environments as possible. Our goal is to slowly expose our puppy to as much of the world as we can, whilst doing it in a safe and positive manner. While interacting with children, the puppy must be supervised at all times. This will ensure the safety of the puppy and the children. Here's a few short clips of some environments we took Val in the early stages. Remember, we always carry treats with us so that we can reward her and create positive associations with these locations. The key to success is to not overexpose the puppy in one session. Safety is always at the forefront of our mind, so while conducting our socialization, we have the puppy on a leash where appropriate.
While socializing the puppy, we must ignore any insecurities it may show. If your puppy becomes fearful, we must avoid the temptation to comfort the puppy, as in reality, we are reinforcing and validating that fear or insecurity. As you can see here, Val showed some discomfort at the sound of a loud train engine, so we knew this was something we had to work on. At the time, I waited for the initial fear to subside and gave her a reward for the recovery. I did not console her or validate the fear. For a minor insecurity like Val had around engine noise, it is possible for you to create a counter conditioning routine that will help the puppy understand that there is nothing to be fearful of. Rather, they will enjoy what previously had scared them. We set up a scenario so that we can control Val's entire environment and get her through her fear of engine noise. We slowly introduce her to the noise and reward her when she recovers and offers us engagement through eye contact. Eventually, Val has come to think of engine noise as a marker that means she is about to receive a reward. If a scenario presents itself where your dog shows insecurity, like Val is showing here, while you're on the move and can't narrow down exactly what it is, you must continue on as planned, removing the puppy from that situation, ensuring not to validate that fear. Socialising with other puppies and dogs is important. As your puppy matures, they must learn what is and is not appropriate play. This is where you must be extremely careful, as if your puppy is attacked by another dog during this critical development phase, you will end up with a number of psychological problems that can lead to extreme fear or even dog aggression. We are very lucky in that we had lots of other puppies and other dogs around that we knew were healthy and safe for Val to be around. Here she is playing with her best friend, Ghost. During supervised dog play, this really is the upper limit of what is acceptable before you should separate two dogs for risk of it escalating to actual aggression. If you don't have access to any dogs that will be suitable for you to socialise your puppy with, then Puppy Preschool is a great place to take your puppy where it can socialise with other puppies, all under the supervision of an expert instructor. <laughs> In this video, we will talk about the correct way to use a leash with a very young puppy. In the very early stages of puppy development, we like to use flexi leashes. These allow the puppy to explore its environment whilst we are able to maintain positive control over the puppy. At this stage, we haven't taught the puppy how to heal and we want it to feel a little bit independent while we are conducting socialization. The flexi leash allows the puppy to explore and with five to 10 meters of line, we will reduce its ability to form a habit of always having tension on the leash. Our first step is to create a positive association with the leash. During off-leash play, we intermittently clip the puppy to the leash, deliver a food reward and remove the leash. Our intention here is for the puppy not to see the leash as a constraint or have the leash symbolize the end of play.
Once we have made a positive association with the leash, we move on to walking the dog on leash. As you can see, the flexi leash allows Val to openly explore her surroundings, all whilst we maintain positive control over her. If you ever become tangled while using the leash, don't panic, just maintain positive control. It's most important that we never create a situation where the puppy can get itself into trouble. <laughs> Come on. Some puppies will not like being on a leash when they are out and about for the first time. It's important you don't just drag the puppy along by the leash, but rather create a positive situation for the puppy with lots of praise and motivation. The first time you take your puppy out on the leash, it should be just to practice being on leash, rather than heading somewhere on a schedule you have to meet. Right from the start, we want to teach our puppy that roads represent a barrier they cannot cross without permission. At every road we cross, we must restrict the puppy from getting onto the road until they sit and look at us. Even when we haven't yet taught the puppy to sit, it is a behaviour puppies are likely to offer us if we just keep them waiting long enough. When they do, we mark and reward. As our training continues, we should set up scenarios to further reinforce the road as a barrier to our puppy. We like to get the puppy to sit and offer us eye contact at either side of the road. Using a leash allows you to control your puppy's access to the surrounding environment while keeping the puppy safe and under your control. Remember, at this very early stage in your puppy's development, we are not worried about the puppy walking right beside us on a loose leash. We are more concerned about creating a positive association with the leash and the environment. Jumping is one of the most common unwanted behaviours people seek professional advice on getting under control, as this can lead to accidental injuries to both owners, guests and children. The trick is to stop your puppy jumping right from the start. Whenever we are interacting with a puppy and it jumps up and puts its paw on us for whatever reason, we must not reinforce that behaviour with absolutely anything that the dog could interpret as praise. The key is to give no satisfaction or success from jumping on us. Once the puppy shows us desired calm behaviour, we mark and reward. Yes! Good girl. It's important to use this technique absolutely every time we are interacting with the puppy. 
it's important everyone who's interacting with a puppy treats jumping behavior in exactly the same way. Some dogs are more persistent than others, and this technique can take some time to master. If this becomes an ongoing problem for you and your puppy, you'll need to talk to your local balanced trainer. There are many different types of toys available for your puppy. We love using Kong products as they are extremely durable and safe for your puppy to use. Like any toy, you will need to build value to make it interesting for your puppy. There are many different ways we can do this, including stuffing toys with food and teaching the puppy how to interact with us through the toy. By stuffing the Kong with various types of food, we will make chewing on it very interesting to the puppy, resulting in the Kong itself becoming a high value reward for the puppy. We like to soak kibble in water to make it a bit mushy, then mix that with a variety of other treats. When we stuff the Kong in this way, the puppy will continue to be motivated to chew and will work for the treats within, as it never knows what type of food it will be able to chew out next. For very enthusiastic chewers, we sometimes like to freeze these stuffed Kongs before giving it to the puppy. When your puppy is left home alone, it will need some mental stimulation. This is where the toys stuffed with food come in handy. A dog that is happily chewing and playing with its own toys does not bark, dig, or get itself into any sort of mischief. Giving your puppy something to entertain itself with is also a great way to reduce the likelihood of developing separation anxiety. To a puppy, movement is motivation. We have to be animated and move the toy to create the desire to chase. Yes! Every time the puppy brings the toy to us, we mark and reward by playing a small game with the puppy. We let it win the toy back, which will increase its motivation to continue interacting with us through the toy. This is the very first time we have done this sort of play with Val, and as you can see, her motivation increases to interact with us through the toy. Puppies love to chew on anything and everything. It's up to us to educate them on what they can and cannot chew. Rather than waiting for your puppy to catch you off guard, no. it's best to set up a scenario where your puppy will show interest in something that is not a toy, so that you can give the no command and redirect them onto something that is. No. Yes! If 
If the puppy has the option between the toy, and in this case our shoe, and still decides on the shoe, we give the no command, all play stops, and the puppy is put away in the crate. No. We have to understand that it is our job to build value in all the puppy's toys. We can do this both through food and play. To recall is just about the most important thing you'll ever teach your puppy. We must always be able to recall our puppy with a 100% success rate. To ensure we achieve this, we must follow a few simple steps. The first step is making the puppy want to come to you when you are out and about. We want to make a game of the recall by being the most exciting thing in the puppy's environment and rewarding it every time it gets near you. We will build a strong relationship between us and the puppy. Remember, movement is motivation to a puppy. So running from the puppy just a short distance will seem like a great game to the puppy as it attempts to chase us. At this stage, we are not using a word or command to recall the puppy. Rather, just excited noises to get the puppy's attention. The first time we are going to use the command for the recall is when we are training in a distraction-free environment. By being the only thing that is remotely interesting in a training environment, in training with an energised puppy, we can be sure it is going to come to us when called. Yes! Good girl! We can then progress to a restrained recall, where one person holds a puppy facing the other. By excitedly regaining the puppy's attention, we use our recall command and immediately allow the puppy to run to the person calling it. When it arrives, we mark and reward. Restrained recalls are a lot of fun to the puppy and there is no time spent resetting the training scenario. By holding the dog and creating that frustration to get to the other person, we can be sure there is minimal chance of the puppy not running to them and we can slowly increase the distraction level in the environment. Slowly, we build to the point where we are able to recall the puppy from something else it is interested in. Well, come. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. To ensure our recall remains bulletproof, we must be careful not to ever let the dog think it has an option of deciding not to come back to us when called. Before we have a 100% reliable recall, the puppy should never be off leash in an area where it is not contained. The two following clips show different scenarios where we have chosen whether to use the recall command based on the reaction we got from Val as we called her name. If the environment is too distracting for the puppy, then we need to take a step back in our training or have the puppy on leash in that area. Val, come. Yes, good girl. The recall must have a hundred percent success rate, and so it is a behavior we must prove. In this scenario, there are high value distractions placed
place to Apple Vow. When we recall her and she chooses not to come, we give the no command and lightly tug on the lead, redirecting her motivation back towards us and rewarding as soon as she arrives, making us more valuable than in distractions. We immediately let her go back to the distractions and after a short break, we recall her again. After many repetitions, Val has learned that there is a negative consequence for disobeying us. Val is a very sensitive dog and needs a very small amount of pressure to be convinced to come back to us. Val has learned that when she recalls correctly, she is rewarded and then allowed to return to play. The recall is the most important thing we are going to teach our puppy. It provides the ability to control the puppy while it is off lead. When we are able to reliably recall our puppy, we can be sure that if a dangerous situation presents itself, we can call the puppy back to us and out of that situation. In this video, we will show you how to commence teaching the very basics of obedience. We will cover the sit, down and stand individually. In the early stages, we do not give a verbal command like sit, rather we just lure the puppy into the desired position. Remember, Formal training sessions such as these should last no longer than three to five minutes. The first behaviour we are going to teach our puppy is the sit. It is a very simple, natural behaviour that your puppy will be easily lured into. Yes, good girl. We lure the puppy's head above its normal position. As the puppy's head moves up, it will drop its back end towards the floor. Once the puppy's rear end is stable on the floor, we immediately mark and reward. Yes! Yes! The second behaviour we are going to teach our puppy is the down. This is a simple progression from the sit. Yes. Down. Once the puppy is in the sit position, we lure the puppy's head by pressing slightly into the puppy whilst moving our hand in a downward motion. We do this until the puppy's body makes contact with the ground. As soon as it does, we mark and reward. The third behaviour we are going to teach our puppy is the stand. Again, this is just a progression from the down. Yes, good girl. With the puppy in the down position, we place our hands slightly above and in front of the puppy's nose. The puppy will want the reward in our hand and will naturally follow our hand movement. By moving our hand forward, we are then luring the puppy into the stand. As soon as it does, we mark and reward.
Once the puppy is consistently following the lure into any of the desired positions, we can then add a command for that position. It's critical we give the command prior to luring so the puppy learns the association between the command and the lure. Remember, one command, lure, mark, reward. Sit. Yes. Sit. Yes. When your puppy is out and about socialising, you should take the opportunity to conduct training sessions such as these. In this way, we can slowly increase the puppy's distraction level. These behaviours are the basic building blocks of all the obedience we will teach our puppy as it grows. Remember, when adding the command to any behaviour, only give it once, lure, mark, then reward. We should aim to do sessions such as these twice a day, three to five times a week, for sessions of only three to five minutes. Having already built the value for the toy, the puppy should naturally want to chase a toy and return it to us in order to continue the game and interact with us. Now we are teaching them that letting go of the item does not mean the game is finished, rather it's just going to restart. The retrieve and the release can be taught at the same time. Out. Yes. Girl. That's a good girl. While playing with the puppy and its toy, we hold the toy still and simply place a food reward in front of the puppy's nose, which will exchange for the item in its mouth. As we do this, we give the release command. We use the word out. Once the puppy has released the toy, we mark with a yes and follow through with a food reward. As soon as the puppy has finished eating, we re-engage in play. This teaches the puppy that bringing the toy back to us and letting go results not only in a food reward, but enables the play to restart. Out. Yes. Out. Yes. This behaviour must be practised in a number of locations with a variety of toys. As we progress, we will be able to phase out the food reward and the puppy will learn that by bringing the item back to us, we will engage in play. And when the puppy releases the item on command, the game will restart. Good girl. Out. Yes. Good girl. Oh, that's a good girl. That's a good girl. Oh, yeah. Out. Good girl. As you can see, it's not hard to teach the puppy to retrieve and release on command. This works not just with toys, but should your puppy pick up something that could be harmful, you will have the tools to stop it and safely control the situation. Prior to picking up your puppy, it should have already begun its vaccination process. When we get the puppy home, we must then take it to our own vet to ensure there are no health problems with the puppy and continue with its vaccination schedule. You can expect your vet to do a thorough examination of the puppy and provide you with an expert guidance in maintaining your puppy's health. If you have any questions or concerns, regardless of what they are, this is the perfect opportunity to get advice. Like what age you should desex your puppy. If you have bought a puppy that has not yet been vaccinated, then that process can start here. Good girl. 
During this first visit to the vet, you can get advice on what and how much to feed your puppy, as well as get advice on where your puppy can attend puppy preschool, or find a reputable trainer to help with any ongoing issues that may be outside the scope of what you have learned here. While you're at the vet, you should arrange to have your puppy desexed when it comes of an appropriate age. We highly recommend all pet dog owners do the responsible thing and have their puppies desexed. We want to do everything we can to avoid accidental pregnancies that almost always result in more dogs ending up in shelters and potentially being destroyed. Now that your puppy's a little bit older, we can start to expect a bit more mental exertion from it. We're going to start building focus in the puppy. Our goal is to drag out the length of time that the puppy will focus on us, looking at nothing else, ignoring distractions, and just attempting to engage with us. In order to teach any sort of complex behavior, the puppy has to understand that everything positive happens while it is focused on us. To do this, we go back to basics and begin training in a distraction-free environment. With the puppy on leash so that it cannot leave to entertain itself, we give the command look and wait for eye contact from the puppy. When you get it, mark and reward. Very quickly, the puppy will learn that the look command means they must offer eye contact. Slowly, we try to increase the duration we hold that eye contact for. Yeah, look. Yes. Good girl. Break. Oh, you good girl. If the puppy moves between rewards, we just put it back in that spot and continue the exercise. In this way, the puppy is learning it must give us all its attention. Yeah, look. Yes. Break. Look. Our goal is always to reward the puppy without it looking away. If it does break eye contact to look at something else, its punishment is the withholding of the reward. When it does look back at you, it must be rewarded immediately. This way, the puppy will learn only in doing what we are asking will it achieve success. When we are ready, we remove the leash and slowly introduce distractions. Look. Yes. No. Look. Yes. Notice how when Val moves to sniff at something she finds more interesting, the no command immediately has her go back to focus. So we mark and reward. Look. Yes. Look. Yes. Be careful that the puppy is actually looking at you and not the reward in your hands. As we increase the level of distractions and move outside, it may be necessary to put the puppy back on leash. We should only do a few of these before we give the puppy a chance to break the position. Yes, break, oh good girl, woohoo! When we're at this level of focus, we can move on to the next section. Building focus has to be done in small doses. We're attempting to increase the puppy's attention span and that's not done quickly. Don't push the puppy too far too soon. If the puppy does look away before you give it permission, reward it as soon as it offers eye contact again, even if you're at the point where you can hold eye contact for several seconds. Training sessions like this should be kept short with breaks after only a few repetitions, but you can do several of them per day. Now that we have increased the puppy's attention span, we can start to increase the duration we get it to stay in those positions. In this video, we will show you how to do it with a puppy in a down. But you can and should teach the puppy to stay in a sit and stand as well. 
We have already taught the puppy to hold eye contact with us while we are both static. Now we begin to move while still holding eye contact with the puppy. We have to be quite dynamic in how we deliver the reward to the puppy so it does not think that it is being lured into another position. In the early stages, we need to stay close to the puppy and only make very small movements away from it. Slowly we increase the distance and duration from the puppy between reward deliveries. Then after a small number of rewards in position, we give the brake command and let the puppy move around. Every now and again, reward, then break the puppy right away. We don't want the puppy to begin to predict when it will be allowed to move freely and therefore preempt that release. Like all behaviours, when we have master doing this in the home under minimal distractions, we slowly increase the level of distractions, keeping in mind that we may need to reduce the periods we hold the puppy in position. Slowly, we want to build up to the point where we can walk away from the puppy with heaps of distractions and then call it back to us from that position. In the early stages, as you move away from the puppy, it's likely to break the position and follow you. This picture is new to the puppy, and so its punishment is as simple as withholding the reward. Down. Yes. Look out. No. Down. As training continues and we are confident the puppy understands what is required of it, we can become more demanding. When a puppy breaks the position, we physically place it into the position we ask it to be in. Val is a very soft natured dog and so you can see we are still quite gentle with her. You may need to be more forceful with your puppy. Notice how in this video, where Val breaks position with our command, we don't even get a chance to place her back into position as she realises herself and gets back into the down. Just like building focus, we have to build the stability in positions slowly. It is very important that the dog understands what it is we are asking prior to placing too much pressure on it. The number of repetitions it is going to take will vary from puppy to puppy. But if the puppy is breaking positions constantly in the early stages, then it is not ready for this exercise and you need to step back and build more focus and engagement. Also be sure that your puppy understands the sit, down and stand prior to attempting this. No one wants to get dragged all over town by their puppy. And so healing is one of the most important things you will teach. To get the puppy walking politely on the leash, we need to build up to even using the leash. In this video, we'll show you the steps from first luring your puppy into the heel position, all the way up to the puppy walking perfectly by your side. 
making walking your puppy much more enjoyable. To lure the puppy into the heel position on our left side, we take a step back with the left foot and lure in a large teardrop motion, bringing the puppy to our side. To set the puppy up for success and get it into the correct position, you may need to take a step forward. We can layer our training by reinforcing other behaviours we've already taught, in this case, the look. Everything we have been teaching the puppy up to this point has been static. Now we are adding the complexity of movement. This behavior of luring the puppy while you move forward can be a little bit tricky for you and the puppy. As we step forward with the left foot, we keep the lure locked to the side of our leg, in line with the puppy's nose, ensuring we move at a slow, steady pace. After numerous repetitions, the puppy will begin to understand what we are asking of it. And from there, we can slowly pick up the pace. We only take a couple of steps before we mark and reward, then break the puppy. Jumping is normal at this early stage, but we must be careful to only give the reward marker when the puppy has all four paws on the ground. Once again, focus plays a large part in this training. Yes, break. Good girl. In time, we are able to have the lure in our hand by our side and the jumping will have stopped. Everything is the same with the inside turn with the addition of adding the lure as a blocker so we can pivot our body around the puppy. As soon as we complete the turn, we mark and reward. As we introduce distractions, it will be necessary to place the puppy on leash. We like to hold the leash in our right hand behind our back so we can hold the puppy in position without the leash getting in the way. Slowly, we can phase out the leash and expect the puppy to heal next to us for longer periods. Like all behaviours, this needs to be practised in a variety of environments. Once we have mastered healing, loose leash walking becomes a breeze. The puppy fully understands what is expected and the leash is really just there for safety and to comply with local laws. When we are 100% sure that the puppy understands what we are asking of it, only then can we deliver a correction with the leash. The puppy will then understand that it must maintain the position next to us, 
All corrections must be firm but fair. You have to pay attention to the puppy in case it is surging ahead of you. Before it gets the chance to pull the leash tight, you can give a pop on the leash, which will redirect the puppy's attention back to you, thus providing feedback to your puppy that pulling is an undesirable behaviour. Once the puppy is back in the desired position, you can praise or reward the puppy. Teaching the puppy to heal properly is a long process, but it offers a big reward. Having the ability to walk the dog with a loose leash is a true pleasure enjoyed by only a few. The early stages are the most difficult, but stay patient and consistent. Take the time to make sure the puppy knows what is expected before moving on to the next step or adding distractions. Teaching the puppy to target something is really handy if you plan to step your training up and move on with teaching other, more complex tricks and behaviours. The good news is that it's done really easily and quickly, often in just a few sessions. We start off using a shallow bucket, but in reality you can use any object that is raised slightly from the ground and has a different texture. We simply lure the puppy onto the target. As soon as both paws are on the object, we mark and reward. Yes. 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 Most puppies pick this up really quickly because it's so black and white to them. The puppy realizes that when its paws are on the target, it gets rewarded. Yes. Good girl. This way. Yes. Good girl. This way. Yes. Good girl. Building stability on the target is really simple. We just keep offering awards for being on the target. It's a lot like things the puppy already knows and will come easily. Good. Good. When the puppy is consistently following the lure onto the target, we add the command while we're on the way to the target. The puppy will pick this up really quickly. We can then phase out the lure altogether. By walking towards the target, giving the command, we are assisting the puppy into place. For the target, we like to keep a pointing gesture with the command. Target. A large rubber tub isn't the most practical thing to be carrying around. So as soon as the puppy has this behavior down pat, we can phase out the tub and replace it with something much smaller. Very briefly, we go back to luring the puppy onto the new item. But with our hand signal and command, the puppy will make the association very quickly. Teaching your puppy to target an item and stand on it will become more handy than you ever would have thought. Before long, you'll find yourself thinking of new ways to use the target around your home, like making it a place the puppy goes to when guests come over. Teaching your puppy to down while it's on the move may just save its life someday. It's a simple progression from the static down it already is familiar with. 
Our goal is to teach the puppy that no matter what it is doing, even if it's carrying out another command from us, it must stop and drop in position. We start by having the puppy chase us and we suddenly stop to give the down command. You may need to do this a few times as initially it will confuse the puppy. We progress to the point where the puppy downs without us stopping. We need to mix up the picture for the puppy, so what we are doing doesn't become so predictable. Occasionally, we should return to the puppy to reward it in place. Other times, during the session, we let it recall all the way to us. Every now and again, we will down it twice on its way to us. Come. Down. A 10 to 15 metre leash will assist us in situations where the puppy is much more stimulated. During what seems like play to the puppy, we give the command to down and our assistant with the leash immediately takes up the slack and applies tension if necessary. The puppy then realises that it must down when told. By now, the puppy should have the idea, no matter what's going on, no matter how exciting it is, when we give the down command, it must down. Chances are that if you ever have to give this command in a high stress situation where the puppy's life is at risk, you'll be yelling and your tone will not be what the puppy is used to. And so, we practice using that tone as the training continues. Always remember that when training the down at distance to vary the command given to the puppy. Sometimes it'll come all the way to you and other times down it prior to arriving. Vary the reward type and intensity to make sure the puppy doesn't go through the motions during a training session. Don't let the training become predictable. In time, the command to down will be effective whether your puppy is engaged with you or not. Downing on the move does take some time to master. In the early stages, there may be some confusion and discomfort for the puppy. It's 100% worth instilling in your puppy as one day it may be the best way to save it from danger. A fun trick with some practical applications is teaching your puppy to heal on both sides. Here we're going to show you a really cute technique for getting the puppy to change from one side to the other. Pivoting around their front legs is a really unnatural behaviour for any dog, and so it's something we have to teach them to do. With the puppy's front feet on the target, we use spatial pressure from our bodies as well as a steady lure to manipulate the puppy into moving its back legs to make taking food from our hand more comfortable. Most dogs will prefer to go one way over another, so we must practice both. Keep in mind, you may need to put your legs in the puppy's way to convince it to turn the direction we want. We use our right hand to lure the puppy anti-clockwise and our left hand to go clockwise. Yes.
Now, as we stay still on one side of the target and we lure the puppy around the target until it bumps into our legs on either side. Take careful note of our hands and which one we use to lure the puppy as we move it around the target in both directions. As we are static, it's now right hand for clockwise movements and left hand for anti-clockwise. As our puppy learns the positions, we can phase out the target and keep the puppy moving by pivoting on its front paws. Right. By now, we should be able to add the commands. Yes. Yes. To this point, we've just been teaching the puppy how to move its body into the positions we want. Now we start shoring up what those positions are. Here we had Val and a sit on our right, a stand in front, and a down on the left. Right side. Heel. Like all behaviours, when we have phased out the lure, we right can side. then start rewarding with a toy. Yes! Good girl. Ha ha ha. This is more of a complex behaviour and will take some time to master. Through consistency and repetition, this behaviour is easily achievable. Just don't attempt to skip any steps and don't be tempted to drag out training sessions for too long. Remember, work to your puppy's attention span, not yours. We like teaching a puppy to sit between our legs as it can often keep it out of trouble. If you're in a line or a crowded space, having a puppy between our legs gives it some protection as well as giving us the ability to feel that our puppy is safe with us without being able to see it. To get the puppy between our legs, we lure in a large sweeping motion around us. As the puppy follows the lure, we let the movement of our other hand guide it into position. When it's there, we lure up with the original hand guiding the puppy into a sit. Then we mark and reward. When the puppy understands the lure, we can add the command. Place. 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 By luring the puppy forward with us, as we take a few steps, we'll be able to teach the puppy that the command place means stay between our legs even while we move around. Yes. Place. Eventually, we fade out the lure in both getting the puppy in position and keeping it there. Teaching a puppy to stay between our legs is a really simple and practical trick that will help you and your puppy develop an even stronger bond. Rolling over is the quintessential dog trick. It always brings a smile to people's faces and being a natural dog behaviour, it's great fun for the dog as well. On top of all this, it's super easy to teach. With the puppy in a down, we lure close to the floor in a nice tight arc over the puppy's shoulders. In their attempt to get at the food, they will very ungracefully end up rolling over.
Initially, your puppy will be confused and it may take several minutes to manage to lure the puppy over for the first time. Most puppies will prefer to roll one way over another, so if you're having no success, then try going the other way. Once your puppy is being lured through the rollover every time, we can start to add the command. We've chosen roll. Yeah. Roll. As the puppy learns the command, we can phase out the lure and start rewarding with a toy. Roll. Yes. Roll. Good girl. Roll. Yes. Oh, good job. Yeah. Roll. Yes. As you can see, this is a trick that's very easy to achieve and can be used to show off at the park. Asking your puppy to beg is a cute trick that we can work into everyday situations. When we are training a puppy to the high standard that we are, we don't want friends and relatives giving our puppy treats for no reason and potentially reinforcing an undesirable behaviour. Having a puppy that will beg on command allows us to create an opportunity for training and that treat delivery will reinforce a behaviour we have taught and are comfortable with rather than potentially something we are not. With the puppy in a sit, we lure just above its nose and push slightly over the puppy's head so that it must lift its front paws off the ground to get at our lure. When it's there, we mark and reward. Be careful not to lure too high so that the puppy stands. Only mark when the puppy is still in a sit but has both front paws off the ground. Yes. When we can consistently lure the puppy into position, we add the command. Yes, good girl. Big. Yes, good girl. Big. Yes, good girl. Yes. Good. Break. Slowly, we face out the lure and begin rewarding with a toy. Yes. Big. Yes. Good girl. Sit. Big. Yes. As you can see, this is another great trick to teach your puppy as it enables you to manage the circumstances under which we allow people to engage with the puppy. We always want to reward behaviours that are desirable and not just deliver rewards for nothing or potentially something undesirable.